Hello everyone, my name is Ali Zoidos, and today I'm going to talk to you about Neural Machine Translation. The agenda for today. Why is this important? Why am I talking about translation? What was before NMT? How does it work? I want to break that down into two... Um, I want to focus on Google Translate's model. The encoder-decoder portion of it and this I, uh, model of zero-shot translation. I'm going to go through some examples for you to give you a better understanding of the progress made with it. And finally, wrap up with a conclusion. Why is this important? The translation industry is a $40 billion industry. I never really thought about how important <laughs> or how big of an industry this actually was. Also, according to the New York Times, Google Translate alone serves more than 500 million monthly users and translates about 140 billion words per day. That sounds insane. Um, that's probably a portion of, not everybody's just going to Google Translate, but in your email and everything like that, it has Auto Translate um, as a part of it. So I'm sure the numbers were inflated a little bit there. But it's nevertheless important. Government, military, community needs. Maybe here in the US, our government right now as Congress doesn't need translation so much, but you think of the UN, the European Union, Asia. Not everybody, has to sp not everybody is speaking English. You have to communicate with people from, uh, in different languages. Military, our armed forces who are going overseas. We have to be able to communicate to the locals over there. And our community. Here in New York, every day I'm sure you hear a different language that's not English. So it's really important that we're able to communicate with one another. And globalization. If you want to start a business abroad, I don't think you'll be able to just speak in English, especially if you go somewhere in Asia. Before NMT. So before neural machine translation, Google especially used this phrase-based model, which was PBMT. Where, as you can see, it's translating this sentence word by word. So he goes to the curry restaurant, was translating he to he, goes to goes, two to two. The curry restaurant was grouped as a phrase and then translated into Japanese and reordered based on the Japanese grammar structure. You may think that this is fine. I mean, you get a translation, not any of you, I don't think, can understand translation, <laughs> can understand the Japanese, but it's a fine translation. But what happens when you get to more complicated sentences is you lose context. You don't, if you don't remember the previous words beforehand, you're going to get an inaccurate or poor translation. And that's where NMT comes in. So NMT is a new approach to machine translation that uses a large neural network to enhance performance. In other words, the computer uses deep learning to build an artificial neural network to teach itself how to translate between languages. It uses these neural networks to tra translate entire sentences without breaking them down into smaller parts. So I'm going to come back to this visual. Let me restart it because I don't think you're, you have to pay attention here because each Chinese character is being read in this top encoder. Once the entire sentence is read, it is then finally decoded word, one word at a time in English. And one more time, you'll see this attention. You'll see this attention here, come up, where that is giving a weighted distribution over the encoded Chinese words most relevant to generate that English word. And the important thing about this is it keeps the context of the sentence. And as I mentioned before about this zero-shot translation model, this was one of the coolest things I thought when I was doing my research. So this computer is being tra trained to translate from English to Korean, Korean to English, English to Japanese, and then Japanese to English. And without seeing any training data for Japanese to Korean, it has taught itself how to translate from Japanese to Korean and Korean to Japanese. 
So I thought that was a fascinating and huge advancement for uh, translation in general. And now I want to move on to some examples, just so you guys can really get an understanding of what's happening here. So I have this Japanese sentence up top. And Microsoft Translator gives you two different translations. One is the old statistical model, or what Google Translate called their phrase-based model. The other is the new neural model. So this Japanese sentence up top translates down below. The morning, 5 o'clock. The evening paper, 5 p.m., should arrive. That doesn't sound great. And then you have the other translation. The morning paper will arrive at 5 a.m. and evening paper at 5 p.m. That seems like a lot more, a more of a proper translation. To the left is our statistical old model. It's, you can see almost how it's word by word in that model, how it was let me show you with my pointer here. So the morning, 5. Evening, 5. Will arrive. And it's wor broken down word by word. This neural translation just sounds more natural or more appropriate when speaking to someone else. Quick Japanese lesson for you guys. One of my favorite phrases is this word, is this phrase called Ichigo Ichie. And it's not always easy to translate to English, but using this Japanese English dictionary that I use online a lot, it's translated as a once in a lifetime encounter. And hence, it should be cherished as such. So as I was doing my research on NMT and seeing the progress, I was like, wow, I want to see what Google came up with, with for this. I want to see the difference. And I was really surprised and shocked, actually, when I got Forrest Gump as the answer. <laughs> um, I had no idea what was happening and was very confused until I dug a little deeper and found out that this is actually, this is also the um, subtitle to the Japanese version of Forrest Gump. So. <laughs> As it was going through the neural network, it probably saw this more than it saw that more difficult translation. And another interesting thing about it was when I put this through Microsoft Translator, the statistical model was actually closer. <laughs> As you can see, one is gum and the other is once in a lifetime. So it's still difficult. And maybe there are times when we should be using, we should be going back to that statistical model. But the neural model has made huge progress. And that's what I want to conclude with. Neural machine translation is really important for our communities, for the world, to be able to communicate with people in, in foreign countries. It's made significant progress just in the last year. I'm, I believe it was last September, September 2016, when Google um, released this, and overnight, Google translates, um, Google translates results improve significantly. But it's not yet perfect, as you can see. It's getting there, but the most difficult thing you can think about with translation is if you have a technical sentence, you can give five human translators that sentence, and you might get a different sentence back. So it's a, not an easy topic, but it's very important. And I'm really excited to see the to see where this goes in the next year or a few years. And if you are interested, I highly recommend Stanford has a um, YouTube course uh, on natural language processing where one of the lectures focused on neural machine translation. Google has their research blogs and there's different <laughs> various articles online about it. So thank you for taking the time to listen to me.